people in our lives. Uh, Mel Dimmitt, Melanie Dimmitt, uh, Sarah Thomas, and Stacey Phillips. Um, they're going to chat you through for the first sort of half hour or so, just some tips and tricks around tube feeding, blended diets, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we're going to have plenty of time at the end of this session for uh, questions. So for those who missed what I was um, saying earlier, um, you will have the opportunity to ask questions at the end and you can either ask those questions live or as they pop into your head during the presentation today or even now, you can pop in at any time to the chat function that you should see on your screen and you can submit your question there and then we will go through those questions at the end of the evening. So just before we get uh, started, I will introduce you because I know the three ladies on the screen uh, may not be familiar to all of you. Firstly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Paul Possibon. I'm the Managing Director of NAPA Australia. NAPA, if you don't know about NAPA, is a paediatric clinic that offers uh, paediatric physiotherapy, occupational therapy and speech therapy. Uh, we currently have a, a large clinic in Sydney. We also have one in Melbourne and we are opening in Brisbane um, uh, in August of this year. Uh, so we kind of pride ourselves on dealing with uh, complex disabilities, so not really mild disability, but complex disability, really kids who are trying to, to walk, crawl uh, in terms of communication, complex communication needs, um, swallowing, uh, et cetera. Like, uh, so that's what that's a bit of a Napa Centre. Uh, you can check out, us out on www.napacentre.com.au. Our first, uh, our first speaker tonight, Mel, Melanie Dimmitt, if you could wave, Mel. Uh, for those of you who don't know Mel, she's a freelance journo. Um, she launched her debut book, Special, Antidotes to the Obsessions that Come with a Child's Disability, which I'm sure many of you will have seen on the bookshelves or would have heard about being in the disability world. Um, so since uh, since writing that, that was a, uh, what? Three, three years, years ago, ago now. more than three, three years, years ago, ago, Mel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, since then, she's uh, written, spoken, podcast, and advocated far and wide for parents traveling not so typical paths. She currently heads up the news and features. You may have seen her podcast or, or on in Instagram for Higher Up. She does a lot of um, podcasts for Higher Up and award winning pod podcasts, indeed. <laughs> and she also publishes the Blend Tube Feeding magazine of which uh, uh, the second issue came out this week. So congratulations, Mel, for, on the launch of the second edition of The Blend. Uh, and I no doubt we'll be talking a little bit about The Blend and its contents over the course of tonight. So welcome, Mel. Thank you, Paul. Pleasure to be here. Am I doing Sarah and Stacey or are you going to introduce them? Oh, you do them. Round us. Round I'll us do up. them. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next up is Sarah Thomas. Give us a wave, Sarah. Hi. Uh, she's the founder founder of Wholesome Blends and mother to 14-year-old Lewis. Um, after Lewis suffered a major stroke at the age of three years old, um, he needed to be tube fed and Sarah started Wholesome Blends after searching for real food alternatives for her son. Um, she couldn't find them in Australia. She couldn't find those alternatives in Australia, so she created them herself. She created an amazing business, and I was really, really fortunate to to meet uh, Sarah and Stacey up at the Brisbane uh, Source Kids Expo last year. Um, uh, Sarah's brand, Wholesome Blends, is Australia's leading real food option for tube-fed children and adults, and is sold across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, she advocates for tube feeding space for parent for patient choice. Um, and healthy alternatives. And she also supports families on their home feeding journey along with navigating the NDIS. So thank you for your time tonight, Sarah. Thank you. And Stacey, our final speaker for tonight. Stacey, give us a wave. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Stacey is the founder of Tuby Fun and mother to three boys aged 10 years and under, all who have their own special needs. Her youngest son was born with swallowing issues and that requires him to be tube fed. So unable, unable to find um, accessories and items that she needed, she, she created them, much like Sarah. Uh, Tubey Fun is Australia's first tube feeding centred store that helps celebrate all things tube related. Stacey is passionate about helping everyone enjoy their tubes and removing the medical stigma that is attached to tube feeding. 
So welcome, ladies. Thank you very much for your time in celebration of uh, uh, Tube Feeding Awareness Week. That's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. um, thank you to everyone who is online and who has joined us. For those of you who have just logged in, if you do have questions during the course of the first half of this presentation, you are welcome to either store them up in your brain and ask at the end of the presentation, or just pop them into the chat function and we'll get to all those questions towards the end of the session. Thank you, everyone. I will now hand over to Mel, who will be hosting for the rest of the evening. Thanks, Mel. Amazing. Thanks, Paul. You've made my job very easy by beautifully introducing all of us. We are together in the same house at Sarah Thomas's house um, in celebration of Feeding Tube Awareness Week, which is very exciting. Happy Feeding Tube Awareness Week, everyone. I'm going to throw a few questions at these two for the first half of this session. And then after that, we're going to welcome questions like Paul said. So please, anything you want to ask us, have it prepared for the second half of the session. I'm going to start by throwing a question out at these guys um, because we really want to you know, talk about advice and things that we, we wish we knew when we first entered the space. So if there was a gift hamper that was given to families who were new to tube feeding or people as well who are new to tube feeding, what would be in that hamper? What should be in that hamper? Tell me. Stacey, do you want to go? You Product go placement. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I would have loved to have seen where I could go to meet other parents, people in the same situation as me, um, where I could find support. Um, I'd love to have known where to go to get things. So yeah, like food, the, where to buy your supplies from. <laughs> um, you know, what things would make it easier? Like just a little start guide would have been amazing. But I also would have loved something just for the parents or the carers that just to let them know that it was okay and there's support out there and where those supports are. That's, I think, what we really struggled with. Yeah, 100%. What about you, Sarah? Look, I think... I started, I mean, my son was a bit older when he was tube fed. And I think that this is my number one that I would have loved back then. Um, and if you haven't already seen the blend edition one and two, this is the Bible for blended tube feeding. I would have, I mean, that's my number one. I would have loved, like Stacey said, some support and um, assurance that it was going to be okay and we can do this. And for me personally, I would have really loved our hospital team to have said, you have options and you have choices. And, you know, if you want to use a real food or blend something at home, I would have loved to have known that I could do that because I wasn't told that to start with for many, many years. Mm. We didn't know that. So I think, you know, it's that whole just having all of those options and everything handed to us, what we choose to do with all of that information is what well, we choose, but just having it all in a big flyer and a big pamphlet going, this is going to be okay. Absolutely. That was right. And thank you for mentioning it. I'll mention it again. That was why I made this because my son at five years old, after five years of yes, eating yes. pureed real food, um, got a G-tube and was put straight onto a synthetic formula and it was an absolute disaster. And we were told we had to keep pursuing with this synthetic formula and it just was not working and it took going to the parents and being connected with you Sarah to learn yeah. that it was okay to put real food back into him and that turned our whole story around so yes we need to know that there are different ways of doing this formula is not necessarily bad or good but it's not the only thing out there so I think like you said that's so important and being connected in with um, our amazing Tubi community I will say though at the hospital, our stoma nurse did tell me about Tubi Fun, which I'm so glad she did because instantly I was introduced to this gorgeous shop where there were these cute, you know, beautiful little designs. Like my son loves bluey and you had these little bluey G tubes. I mean, anything that can just make that whole experience a little bit, yeah, there you go, a little bit brighter, a little bit more fun is great. <laughs> so, Stace, I want to chat a bit about accessories for tubey families what are some things that you make that families might not necessarily know are available or useful for tube feeding um so our biggest thing is our button pads 
So I started my whole business on these. So um, they're reusable, they absorb any of the leakage, help the button from moving and uh, reduce the granulation tissue. But what they also do is take away the fear. That's what my number one thing was, was just to reduce this medical stigma about a tube um, and it's okay. It's just, I liken it to a pair of earrings. It's just an accessory. Just because our children or adults feed through them doesn't make them this horrible thing that no one can touch, no one can go near. It's just an accessory. So we have our button pads. We also do modified backpacks for people that are on the move. Um, my son Callum, was he's been tube fed since he was nine weeks old and he actually learned how to walk with a backpack on and without. So he was on continuous feeds for 22 hours a day. So that was a real lifesaver for us. Um, and we also, we make a huge range of things, um, but probably the next biggest thing would be insulated bags. So when you're out and about and you've got a feed hanging or you've got supplies that you need to keep cold, like your blends, um, having somewhere to keep them cool, but also be really cool. I love the fact that um, they, when you're out and about, they just change a conversation. So instead of everyone staring and going, oh, what's that? That looks, you know, what is that? Someone will come up and go, hey, that's cool. What's that? And it just flips the entire conversation and you can then explain, you know, what's going on instead of this being judged or like, oh, can't go near them like that. Oh, they must be really sick. So yeah, they're the, but we do a whole range of things. Um, we do, yeah, lots of bags, um, little covers that go over the feeding line. So my son used to um, unclip himself from his uh, overnight feed. That was um, a big issue. So we then created a little cover for them and they're just fun and exciting i want to just you know let's celebrate these tubes that keep us alive like they they don't need to have this medical stigma and this sickness placed around them yeah amazing just be careful with um stace you have these amazing little um bags that you put the g-tube covers in when you put them in the wash and i would definitely say use them because <laughs> ours have fallen out of the dryer and i have found mm -hmm. one of our beautiful little bluey g-tube covers in one of my dog's poos and that was a very sad day <laughs> So do keep them contained in their bag when you wash them. Um, Sarah, I know you've got some awesome tips when it comes to accessories and workarounds. Uh, one in particular I'm thinking of is the pool noodle one. Can you share that one with us, please? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's one that saves a lot of parents' sanity at nighttime with their kids that are rolling around. And look, whilst my son started his tube feeding path when he was three I did have a very big wriggler in the cot when he was little as well so one of the one of the tips and tricks that I recommend to people is when you do run the extension and you're doing an overnight feed or you're hooked up when your child is sleeping is is cut the pool noodle in half and and actually you know and you can cut those to whatever length that you want and that will help them stop tangling themselves and because none of us want a tangled baby in the cot, right? While we're trying to feed them. So yeah, the pool noodle is a great tip. I love mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, amazing. Sarah, I Everyone wanted... Everyone needs a pool noodle. Oh, for everything. We have it for a whole lot of physio solutions as well. We're never without a pool noodle. Yeah. They're amazing, very versatile piece of kit. Um, we want to talk about blended feeds, which is real food blended up through the tube. Sarah has obviously created this fantastic solution, which means we don't need to be cooking and blending all the time. But I know you're also a very big, big advocate for creating your own blends. Yeah. Tell me, do you need to be a good cook to make blended feeds for your child? No, you absolutely don't. You just need to be someone who can cook and feed yourself or cook and feed your other children and just blend what you're making for dinner for your tube fed person. Um, I, I really, yeah, I, I, I want people to blend at home first before they even use any type of product. So I'm a massive advocate and help people do that. If And, and your foods are going to be dependent on their age, of course, and we're talking from one year up to adults. So 
you know, an adult might want to blend a piece of steak and chips and vegetables and a child might want to blend some wheat flakes for breakfast with a banana and avocado or whatever that is. So I, I honestly want to keep this simple. Just you don't have to be a great cook. You just need to know a bit of, you know, common sense food safety like we all have in the kitchen. And it's it, it's it's not overthinking it. It's as simple as that. You say common sense, Sarah, but can you spell out a couple of the things that because not all of us have and stay is fine because I know you and I states probably don't we're not cooks like Sarah. Can you just name a couple of those common so-called common sense pointers around food hygiene that we need to be aware of? Well, I think um, look, let's talk about defrosting blends. So if we've made a big batch of blends, because I don't know if anybody and I'm assuming a lot of people on here tonight have done like batch cooking because it is a really easy way. I used to spend an entire weekend cooking up a massive amount of feeds for my son, Lewis, and it would take the whole weekend. I'd destroy the kitchen, clean that up, and I'd freeze it all. So one of the in, the biggest things is defrosting your food so that you really need to be across your food hygiene for that. So defrost um, blends in the fridge. I actually put my blends in a um, – 500 ml flow care container and they all live in the fridge and I date them and I write what it is and I will defrost that in the fridge overnight and then I will give that to Lewis as a feed. I don't reheat that. So, and I guess a lot of people will reheat it. I, I really worry about reheating food. You've got to do it properly. So my biggest piece of advice when it comes to food safety is to read your local state government's food handling and food safety advice. We're here in Queensland. They have an incredible how to handle food, how to defrost. There's a beautiful Queensland guide of food handling and safety. That applies to our tubies as well. So um, as a rule of thumb, if you would eat it like an apple, then you don't have to cook it. But would you eat a piece of raw fish? I certainly wouldn't or a piece of raw chicken. So if it needs to be cooked, then cook it as per the instructions. But if you eat something orally, then you can blend that raw as well. Very good. Thank you. I want to ask you both about bringing blends into school. Um, Stacey, I might start with you because I know I was very impressed. I just chuck one of these in Arlo's um, school bag every day and his school are very good with that. But Stacey, I know that you do fresh blends and bring them in to school. How does that work? Yeah, yeah, because I didn't actually think about dropping off a box of blends. Stacey, uh, we need to chat. What are you I doing? Know, I know, I know. <laughs> so every uh, every day we make uh, this, the kids' lunch boxes, and so every morning we get our blend pouch and squeeze it into a container, and um, we add veggie juice to ours just to thin it down a bit. And, you know, it's cool to have different cool colours and whatnot, especially when you're at school. And, um, yeah, we then draw up all the syringes that we need for the day and um, Callum takes that as his lunchbox and he gets to feed exactly like the other kids. Well, not exactly, but he sits with the other kids. He participates in morning tea, munch and crunch, lunchtime. Um, but he has his tubes and his teacher aide helps him. Um, and yeah, he just, he doesn't know any different. We just take his lunch box and it comes home every day. We wash out our syringes and make, yeah, the next day's lunch, just like the other boys. So, yeah. yeah. Amazing. How about you, Sarah? How do you do it with Lewis? Well, I'm just sitting here thinking I'm way more lazy than both of you. <laughs> so bad. I literally take two boxes to school every term and say, here's Lewis's lunch for the term. Let me know when you run out. I give them a container of syringes, bolus extenders, toothpicks if there's anything, you know, that goes wrong and um, equipment for flushing and things. But I'm like, yeah. I mean, Lewis has got a twin brother and I like you, Mel. I know we've mentioned this before. I get a little bit frustrated that, you know, I still have to step in and make lunch for him. I'm like, dude, yeah. come on. Why, can't you just take a pouch? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just I, I rock up with these two boxes, drop them off at the office with Lewis's name on it and I walk away. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah amazing you've made it very easy for families like ours Sarah so thank you on that note and for your accessories to Stace how can families make sure that we can get the NDIS funds we need in our kids plans to cover these accessories and you know wholesome pouches or other things that we need for tube feeding do you want to go first Sarah 
Yeah, sure. So um, I think there's a lot of, um, firstly, can I say NDIS, I love it and it's changed our life and it's changed my family's life and given us freedoms that we didn't have before. So massive fan of NDIS. There's still a few teething problems, as I'm sure we all know, um, and not all plan managers, LACs, whoever you're talking with is going to support everything that you want on your plan. Um, I think that I, I would say most of about 98% of my families are funded by NDIS for wholesome blend pouches. Um, some of them have to really fight for it. Some of them don't. Uh, the ones that have to fight for it are the ones that will require a letter from their dietitian. So if you are working and we hope that you are working in consultation with your dietitian about what your child needs, uh, then we would request a letter of support from your dietitian and why that person needs what they need at school. Wholesome Blends also can provide a letter of support as to why a pouch of enteral food is different to, you know, the parent's responsibility of making lunches. So we can actually, if anyone does want that help by going into their plan, we can provide a letter of support explaining why it's different, why you can't buy this on Coles and Woolies shelf. It's, it's food for special medical purpose. So it's a whole different regulations around that so that combined with your letter from your dietitian you should be able to get wholesome blends and if there is any issues please give us a call and we will we will support you in getting that over the line because there's no reason why you shouldn't be yeah Stay. Stay. um i haven't actually had too many people like sarah um the majority of our customers are through ndis um and it falls under their consumables budget so um, we just provide you with the tax invoice. Uh, we do quotes and so forth. Um, I think I've only known of one family that's been declined um, their products um, through their NDIS package. But most of the time, because they're reusable um, and they replace another product like gauze, um, a lot of it is it we haven't had a lot of issues with it but yeah we do a lot of quotes for ndis plans and um yeah we just provide tax invoices and or invoice your plan manager directly and yeah we really don't really have too many issues with um people getting things covered that's good to hear and it's good to hear that you guys are there to help as well if parents want to come to you for advice um, in securing those funds. Sarah, you mentioned dietitians and as you say, it is so important if we're doing a blended diet to do it um, in collaboration with a supportive dietitian. We have a great one. I want to ask you guys what are some of the best tips that you've been given from your dietitians. Certainly we're trying to up Arlo's calories because he's quite little and we need to fatten him up. And me learning that um, oat milk is fattier than almond milk is a change mm -hmm. that we've made recently. And I'm like, oh, so easy, but I just didn't know. So um, Sarah, I'll start with you. What is say the best tip that you've learned from a, from a dietitian in your journey? Look, I think when I first started out, it was it was a different time because we didn't have any of this going on. And, you know, there was no support. Uh, I, I started blended diet six years ago, so we certainly didn't have what we have now. So when I met a supportive dietitian, my first three questions to her, most important questions I asked her and I still use now is, how many calories does my son need per day? Um, and, you know, each child is different and whether they're in a wheelchair or they're active, all of those things you need to take into consideration with how many calories they need per day. How much can his stomach handle? Like what volume can he have? How much am I going to overfill him? And, you know, he's going to vomit that up because none of us want that. So how many calories? What's your stomach volume? And then my third question, which was really important at the time when my son was very, very sick, is how long does it take for that to digest? And so those were really um, the three questions when I was armed with that information and kept updating that as he grew, I was able to then know that I could fill his tummy up with 300 mils, 200 mils, whatever that was, wait the allocated time where I knew his body had digested that. And then I, and when Lewis was really sick, when he first got his feeding tube, he was really, really sick. I was doing four hourly, I was going back to newborn feeds, right, and, and actually sneaking into his room because I knew his, he had digested that, so I was going in and giving him more, and that's how I was topping him up. So, yeah, that was, that was it, but you're absolutely right now, you need to work with your dietitian to, to get that right. 
Yeah, and if they're not supporting you, find another dietitian. If they're not supporting you, there are so many other dietitians that will help you. And if you can't find one, ask any of us, any of us in this community, and we will help you find one because they are out there and they are helping. Yes. Yes. Stacey, what's the best advice you've been given by a dietitian? Um, The best advice I think I was given was we will take it at your pace. We will take it at your pace and whatever we do is it's going to be okay. So, um, and yeah, our dietitian was, um, we were new to blends um, and we had been down the formula route before as well. And Callum has got um, quite the numerous um, gut issues. And so when I started, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea. But she just said to me, we will take it at your pace. It's okay. We will grow together. And um, just knowing that I had the support and that, um, like, I had no idea what I was putting in things. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Is and then it's just as simple as what we eat, he eats. Again, it's, it's not a scary thing. Um, if I was feeding him orally, it's... Um, I would have given it to him, so I just put it in the tube. It was as simple as that. So, um, yeah, just knowing that and trying to get people's heads around that as well has been quite interesting Um, that just because, like, it goes in your mouth, it it ends up in your stomach. So it's just entered via a different method. So, yeah, just taking it at our own pace and knowing that it's okay to start slow until you're comfortable with it and then you know you just find your way and if you need help there's plenty of us out there to help so but yes definitely be working with your dietitian for that but yeah there's there's a huge big community of people that are um, doing blends and tube feeding and um yeah it's it's okay (laughs) yes and we're here to give advice Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. yeah i think connecting with other families is so important at the start of this and I know you two are working very hard so that medical professionals are also going to be talking about more options which hopefully will be very exciting and good in the future um Stace that was great advice thank you and on the topic of advice um say for families who are new to tube feeding or perhaps preparing for tube feeding and you know I was really scared I was a bit grossed out I was really daunted um and, you know, have discovered since somewhat mastering it that I was scared of a whole lot of things that I didn't need to be. Um, mm-hmm. What advice or what words of hope and comfort do you have for families who are new to tube feeding and feeling all the feelings and feeling very overwhelmed and freaked out? What what words do you have for those families? Um, it's going to be okay. And everyone's journey is a little bit different there's not two journeys that are exactly the same and that's okay. That's, that's totally okay. But, um, you will find your rhythm, you will find your routine and it will just become second nature. At some point you will just get up one day, do your feeds and it's just not an issue. And, but getting to that point, it can, there's bumps in the road and there is always in life. Um, but it's just about finding your groove and it's very overwhelming at the beginning. But, you know, there's people there to support you and it's, and it's okay. And it's okay. And it's okay if your journey looks different to someone else's as well. Like, you know, we're, we're one big community, but it doesn't mean we all have to walk the same path. Yeah, beautifully said. How about you, Sarah? Look, I think, um, you know, when I was first told that my son needed a feeding tube, it was a real big, um, you know, it it hit me quite hard and I thought I had failed as a parent so I wasn't able to, you know, do that fundamental feed your child kind of thing. But what I didn't realise at the time was that that feeding tube gave us not just him but all of us freedom and it saved his life. It, It it. it saved our sanity. It took all our stress away. Well, not all of our stress away, but all of our feeding stress away. And it was the best thing and the best decision that we had made to put the feeding tube in because 
we then could not, we could go about a days without worrying about what he'd eaten or what he mm-hmm. hadn't eaten. I didn't wake up in the morning with anxiety of, oh, I've got to feed my child and it's just going to be such a battle. Yeah. So the the button saved his life. The NG saved his life. And I love that device. I love it. I celebrate it. And I mean, look at the week that we're having right now. We should all jump from the rooftops about how amazing this this device is and, and it saved our children. Yeah. Yes. And on that, my last official question for you guys, this is feeding tube awareness week it's getting bigger and bigger every year this is only my second year and I feel already it's exploded (laughs) what can we do to celebrate I know the lovely Sarah at Aussie Inc has gotten buildings all over the country lit up in purple so we can visit their site find out where all those buildings are located and go and take some happy snaps and share to spread awareness um Stace tell me about the gorgeous little accessories that you've created for feeding tube awareness week um, so I teamed up with the designer of Blend. Oh, she's Cassie. not the designer of Blend. I must, oh, I must oh, correct sorry. you there. No, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. One of the artists, is that the yes, right? Yes, she's an sorry. artist featured. Sorry, <laughs> It's all right. The actual designer will kill you if you say that. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, I apologise. I apologise. So um, she has done some... Um, beautiful designs just exclusive for Tube Feeding Awareness Week 2023 Um, and they are on some specialised button pads so um, available over at Tubey Fun um, just to celebrate how amazing tube feeding is and the best way to celebrate this week is speak with everyone around you, share your photos, let's normalise this tube feeding Let's normalise it. Like it shouldn't be something we're afraid of. So just sharing your story, you'd be amazed at how many people respond and how many people just don't actually know that, you know, this is the thing. So, yeah, let's celebrate. Let's um, show off these amazing devices, whether it's NGs, NJs, buttons, pegs, they're, they're all amazing. So, yeah. So good. And I will add, you get a free copy of the blend with all Tubi fun and wholesome blends orders. Absolutely. This week. Yeah. And with every human and whole entry as well. So they'll be going out and this baby is free to read online at any time. And look at the size of it. It's oh. huge. Oh, she's chunky. It is, it's huge. Lots of stories in there and from people. I love, I love the back cover so much. <laughs> Oh, there's one. There's one of the designs. Yeah, there's yeah. One of the prints that she's done. They're absolutely gorgeous. It's Kathy. Can Lee I just Lee. say now, awesome this is amazing, and we love it. And thank you. Yeah. We want it every year. You're not getting away. You have to do this every year it's now. We, we need it. it. I love it. Great. I love making it. So thank you. Anyway, I Paul, wish I had it. Before <laughs> we gush any more over each other, Paul, can we please open the floor to questions <laughs> from everyone who's here? We can. So, hello, everybody. My name is Paul from Napa Centre, and I am your co-host for tonight, even though I disappeared for a little while. But what I want to do is throw it over to our um, viewers. What do I call you? Viewers, participants tonight. If you've got any questions, please either put your hand up so I can unmute you and you can ask your questions direct or pop your question. If you're a little bit shy, pop your question into the chat, and these lovely ladies will Uh, do their best to get through as many questions as we can in the remaining time we have. Uh, I do realise it is a weeknight and you all have lives to go to and also maths is on tonight. So I'll let you get back to that shortly, but we'll get through some important questions before we let you all go. All right, so first questions I'm going to kick off from. Sorry, so if you have a question, pop it into the chat function or put your hand up. Um, I think you can raise your hand. I don't know how I see it, but anyway, you can either turn your camera on and then I'll know you want a question and then we'll unmute you, whatever. Okay, we'll get to it. All right, first question I think is for you, Sarah. Are the pouches appropriate for NG tubes as well? So Holston Blends has been designed for bolus feeding as its first method of going into your tubey. Um, to keep all the calories and nutrients and all the good things inside that pouch, that was the thinnest that we could make it to get through those bolus extensions. 
So whilst it's not designed for NG, we do know a lot of families that have thinned it a little bit more. They may re-blend it and can put it down the NG. You do need to get that, and this is one of my favourite words in the world, that viscosity really thin because those NGs are so tiny. So we would recommend a 12 French and over for something like Holston Blitz and the, and the thickness that it is. But if you add a little bit of liquid, re-blend, yes, you can pop it down um, the NG tube, yes. Fabulous. Thank you for that. And do you want to give a quick plug to your website where everyone can get these wonderful pouches from? Because I know that question is going to come up. www.wholesomeblends.com.au. <laughs> so, so we also Great. we distribute mostly through Hexa, a medical distribution company. Okay, great. All right, next question. Uh, also for you, Sarah, are your pouches available in NZ? Well, I am a Kiwi, so if they weren't available in NZ, yeah. like there would be a big issue. Um, yes. So, yeah, they are. Initially, I did send some stock over. I was very lucky that my father has a freight company over there, but um, – we are now distributing from our warehouse and sending directly to New Zealand. So we do get quite a few orders from New Zealand still, relatively easy, and they're with you on your doorstep within seven to ten days. So, yeah, contact me if you want to buy them from New Zealand and we'll just um, do it um, ourselves and not through the medical distribution company. So, yes. Great. Uh, I think I've got a bit of love from a couple of dietitians online. Hello, Lena. Lena was one of our... Uh, guest speakers Love this time Lena. last year. Uh, Lena, she says, what we eat, he eats. Well, she was quoting uh, youth there, Sarah. She says, I love this, goosebumps. So a bit of love from, from one of your dietitians here. And also Thank Vicky you. Nash uh, says, love what you are all doing. And that's Vicky from Eat and Grow Dietitians in the ACT. Thank so you. hello, Vicky. All right, next question. Uh, also for you, Sarah. I, oh, no, sorry, this one is for Stacey. Thanks. I want to order some tubey fun button pads. Just wondering what is the difference between regular and large? Okay, um, so regular and large, it really comes down to personal preference. The internal um, diameter is the same. So the biggest difference is, I don't have a large here with me, but the large one is fantastic for people that leak a lot because there is extra absorbency in them. Um, so I have kids that use larges because they leak a lot. I also have kids that use larges because you can get more design on a button pad <laughs> and they're just so cool. But on the flip side, I also have adults that will use a regular button pad because they're more discreet. They fit, they fit smaller tummies a bit better. But um, usually if you're not a heavy leaker um, and you don't have lots of issues, then a regular size is going to be your best option. Um, it's just, I, th I think that's what you should start with unless you, your tummy feels better with a larger one. Some people uh, feel more comfortable with something bigger around them. The larges also fit a bit more comfortably around a peg and a bumper. So um, it really comes down to personal preference. Perfect. And can I add there as well yep. that my 14 year old son occasionally sometimes sneaks and doesn't wear a button pad and the yuck from on his t-shirt, mm, nuts. Nah. <laughs> You want a button pad, trust me. But in your old boys are gross. <laughs> and Stacey, how about a how about a plug for your website, please? Oh yes, yeah, so www.tubifun.com.au, and we okay. have new designs um, the first Saturday of each month. So yeah, oh, there's always new tip. stuff coming up. Yeah, that's a great tip. Uh, and designs, I'm assuming, for older children or, or teens as yes. opposed to just youthful designs? Yes, yes. So we do everything from babies to adults um, and we also do customs. Um, so if there's something that you are particularly after, we can try and source that um, design for you. Um, 
but yes, we do, yeah, everything from babies to adults. And if you can't find what you're after, just reach out and let us know. Stacey, a question from me. What's your weirdest design request? Um, as in a product or because we make a the lot design, of design, the look of it. Like, like have you have, have you requested for something like, I don't know, Freddy Krueger or, or I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this in this forum um, oh. because I have some adults that, um, and I actually was I thought it was lovely. She has a feeding tube and she still wanted to feel like a woman and sexy. And so we tailored button pads to what she was after. So yeah, we do, yeah, quite like we did some nice lace ones for her. So, um, and I'm like, well, why not? Why not? Right. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Next question is also for you, Stacey. Um, uh -huh. I want to order some chuby fun, but oh no, I already asked that question. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> do you have any backpacks suitable for NG fed twelve month old? Yeah. So um, we do have our smallest backpack is about um, that big. It's a, I think it's about fourteen centimeters off the top of my head. I can't. So that's the smallest bag we do, but it won't hold a bottle because it's so small. So what we recommend is decanting your feed into a reusable pouch, which we also sell. And then what you can do, if you get the right giving set without the um, bolt, like the drip chamber on it, you can actually squeeze all the air out of the pouches and then connect up your giving set and then it won't draw air and you can leave it sitting down. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, like if they move or if they tip it over, they can be quite mobile with it. So they will work with um, everything from NGs to buttons. Perfect. Okay, moving on. Just remember everyone, we've got um, about 10 or 15 minutes or so left of the chat. So if you've got any questions, just pop them into the chat. We're still making our way through the questions in the chat. So pop them in there now and we'll try and get to as many as we can before our time is up tonight. Um, okay, so uh, Zen Zendre, I think I'm saying that correctly, has asked, if you just blend the meal that the rest of the family are eating, do you blend it with water to get it thinner? Or is there a trick to doing it without just watering it all down too much. Can we throw this to Lena if she's still there? <laughs> Lena, if you're there, are you that. willing to, to jump in on this one? <laughs> Hello, Lena. Oh, she might not be there. I mean, the short answer is don't use water, right? Use something with calories in it. Do you want me to jump in? I'd love yeah. Lena to I'd love Lena to jump in if she can. But like personally, water is a fabulous um, liquid, but it's not really calorie dense and it's not really calorie heavy. It will definitely thin it down, but it's going to thin down your calories as well. Um, I like to thin my blends down with, um, I make a, a chicken stock or you could just get your normal chicken stock from the supermarket. That's got more calories in it. I really love coconut milk as well or um, something, you know, nut milk or whatever, oat milk, like you said before, Mal, any type of those milks. Uh, can thin that down so look if your child needs more hydration absolutely add some water into it but if you can add something that's got something more dense inside then then do that if we can oh lena oh, there's lena yes oh, lena? oh lena lena's here hi can can you guys hear me yes, yes. lena oh, okay. did you hear that question that was just thrown at you I did, and I'm, I'm like doing the dishes at the same time, but <laughs> I stopped the dishes. <laughs> um, first of all, this is an, an awesome conversation. So you three women are incredible. And Paul, thank you for hosting these every year. They're so, so interesting. Um, to the lovely lady that asked the question, as Sarah said, it really depends what the meal is, right? If the meal is 
pretty much a chicken breast, you don't want to also be pouring on top of that, you know, milk. That's, that's quite a heavy, dense meal. You've already got heaps of protein in the chicken. You don't want to be adding, thinning it down with milk on top of that. Um, so it really, but however, if the, if the meal is not, it doesn't have such a high calorie protein base, then perhaps adding a milk or coconut, as Sarah mentioned, might be the better option. So again, both work. Um, broth, uh, fruit juices, um, milks, plant-based milks, cow's milk, it all works, but it depends on what, the ingredients are for the actual meal you're blending okay so um there's no straight answer as sarah explained it brilliantly it really depends on what the meal is so chat to your healthcare professional or chat to tubi parents <laughs> um but yeah it's a great question thanks perfect thank you lena thanks, thanks for lena. jumping in there okay next question oh look at this bobby uh has said we are going in for peg surgery tomorrow any last minute advice so very timely that question yeah. and that and this uh, this session. Who wants to jump in there? I just say bring lots of underwear. I mean, they say you're only going to be in for one or two nights, and hopefully that's the case. Um, but sometimes kids get, or oh, I don't want to damn this, but let's just say just in case, pack a few extra sets of clothes so you're not running to the coals for fresh undies across the road from hospital like I was. Just prepare that you might be in a little bit longer than expected. Is my and two bring cents. a phone charger. Take yes. phone charger. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's okay to feel have mixed emotions about it. It's okay. Like this is something very different. So, you know, it's it's something that you're going to make peace with, and you're going to make it your own. So, yeah, try not to be too frightened. I know it can be scary, but yeah, it's going to be good. It's a good thing. If you need it, it's a good thing. Best okay. of luck. Yeah, best of luck, Bobby, mm -hmm. and for the fam. Uh, Kelly has asked, Sarah, what's the best way of getting the food from the pouch into the NFIT extension tube? So I, I bolus my feeds into Lewis. So the way I way I draw it, every, everyone's different. And I've had so many conversations about this this week. The way I take a wholesome blends pouch, and I don't have a syringe here, but I pour it straight into the syringe and then I tap it and I literally go. Um, a lot of people will use the Chumi adaptions as well. They are amazing little silicon caps that fit on the top of these and yogurt pouches and things like that. And Stacey sells those and they are my godsend like I would not be without my chumi pouches and you can literally one-handed draw it right it's so so good there's the infit um uh oh I don't know what they're called but they connect onto the pouches you can screw them in and you can pull it out and just give it a squeeze it, it, look I mean I'm not great with science there's a whole physics thing going on with liquid and whatever in here and getting that out but it's it's squeezed that it is a little bit harder with the infant extension onto the uh the 60 mil syringe so that's why i highly recommend the chumi tops for these because it will just make your life so much easier just just mm -hmm. stacy you've got heaps in stock at the moment i, do, I hope so I do. I've got that's so good yeah so yeah. good yeah and look, they don't last forever. They might split as well. So you kind of, but they're, they're relatively cheap. You can get them funded on NDIS. And um, yeah. I always have a few packets in my house, it, like in my handbag mostly as well, wherever we go. Yeah. If you don't have one of those things, we just squirt our tubey, um Wholesome Blends pouch yep. into a cup, draw it out with a syringe, bash mm -hmm. the air bubbles out. Keep your finger on the top of that syringe when you're bashing. Otherwise, it's going <laughs> to go out and then yeah. very carefully push the air bubbles out and then we just rinse it off and then go in again for the next so that's good when you're at home if we're going out and i know that we're going to need lunch i will pre-draw up the syringes shove them in a cooler bag and i think they're good for two hours is that right sarah yeah in a cooler bag two hours is pretty safe yes yeah so that's what we do Great tips there, guys. Thank you so much for that. Bobby's got another question. If you remember, Bobby's the one whose child is going in for the peg operation tomorrow. Uh, do you all use the Flow Care Infinity Pump? I currently have a free go for NG tube, but about to change to peg. Um, so I can. Yeah, you go, Sarah. 
So, um, Bobby, I don't know which state you're in, but each state will have a different contract with um, pump providers. Um, initially, we had the Infinity Pump, um, but as I said, I really, I really don't use it anymore. We do bolus feeds for my son, so I'm a bit of a novice. I actually forget how to use it sometimes because we've kind of gotten to the rhythm of Lewis eating when we eat now. Sorry, Paul. Bobby's in, New, Bobby's in New South Wales. So I think you might have a choice down there, Bobby. Uh, look, I'm not 100% across the exactly. um, Well, we got Nutrition. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, so we got our done at um, Sydney Kids and a nutrition nurse yeah. came out with a nutrition pump to us. And we're the and same. We the only infinity. do bolus now. Um, yeah, yeah. We tried the pump. We were on formula and it was good. But, yeah, that didn't work for us. So now we just do bolus yeah. feeds with them. Um, Blend. I've I've used um, the Joey and also the Infinity, and they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Um, so the Nutrition one's a lot smaller and lighter, but the Joey um, you can actually run feeds and flushes at the same time through the Correct. through the pump, yeah. which is a lifesaver. Yeah. yeah. And can I just add to this conversation because pumps are such a controversial topic controversial topic look I have the joey as well and I do find I love that whole flush um, situation so a couple of things to know about your pumps if you are running feed through your pump is you do need to thin that down to get that through the um, giving set um, you may need to re-blend as well I, I literally put a wholesome blends pouch into a flow care container 500 ml give it a shake with 100 ml of whatever liquid and you can run it pretty smoothly down just bear in mind that some pumps, it could void the warranty. So please check with your hospital, check with your pump manufacturer whether that is allowed. And then also, if you are hanging feeds, sorry, but I'm just so passionate about this whole, if you are hanging real food, I really want you to think how long you're hanging that for and how long and how you're hanging it. Here in Queensland, like that whole two hours, like we talked about before, Mel, in an insulated um refrigerated bag is relatively safe um you and again check your state's conditions your food safety will be on the website i really worry about people hanging food because you know and i liken it to if you put a ham sandwich on the bench walked away came back two hours later would you still eat that ham sandwich that's what you're putting into your child as well so please be very careful if you are hanging real food follow your health guidelines um, and just, just you know, just remember, would you eat that yourself if it's been out for a little while? Just We just don't want anyone to get sick. We really, we have enough going on on our plate that we don't want that as well, right? Mm -hmm. so just, just be careful. Cool. Okay. Um, so, Sarah, what would you put into snack blend? I mean, pretty much what you would put in yourself, you know. Um, and look, again, we're not going to overthink this. If I'm going to have some apple and yogurt as a snack, I might just blend that up. Um, super healthy for me. If, if I'm going to have a piece of chocolate cake or a cookie, blend that. Who cares? You know, what What would your other children have and what would you have as a snack? Oh, I've got a beautiful um, adult tubi who quite often will have Jimson's or KFC and she'll blend that up and pop that in her tube and she loves that. I had a, a beautiful um, older woman who loved her black coffee in the morning, you know, so she would put coffee in the tube. The first time I saw that, I was like, oh my God, what's going on? She's like, I like black coffee. And I'm like, so do I. I totally get it. So I, I think that, um, you know, we, we have this whole perception that when we wake up, we have to have breakfast. But I quite often will re-blend what we've had for dinner the night before, and that's what Lewis has for breakfast. So if I've made a roast chicken, more often than not, that's what he's having for breakfast in the morning. Psychologically, I think that our breakfast has to be wheat bix or fruit and yogurt or granola or whatever that is. It doesn't really matter. Our, our, our stomachs don't worry what time of day it is. So just as long as we're getting enough nutrients through the day and it's balanced, then you're fine to do whatever you need. Great tip. Um, Kelly, just shouting out to you, Kelly. I know you had your hand up before. Do you still have a question, Kelly? You want to take yourself off mute if you have a question um, and maybe show your face. If you're the Kelly that I think I may know. No? 
Is it Kelly Vine? It is, yeah. Can you see me? Sorry. Hello, Miss Kelly. How are you? Hot and sweaty. Haven't got icon. Ask, ask the one um, way. My question at the time was more around the um, the adapters. I've worked out quite well how to get the food that I've blended into a syringe and, you know, turn it around and sort it out. Some of the carers in school, I've kind of just got fears around. <laughs> there being food everywhere um, and Finn not getting the lunch. So that was kind of my point there. But um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll hunt down some of the little adapters that you were talking about. Mm, uh, so good. Definitely. Um, the last little question I had was, Sarah, you talked about giving your son bolus feeds. How many a day do you give? Our nutritionist, A, wasn't very supportive of blended feeds, but was very much like he needs to have five feeds a day. Is that what people find is kind of supported by nutritionists? Or do they go, yep, you can have three meals a day and then a little snack along the way if, you know, if you need it kind of thing. Like, what's your experience? Look, it's really, it's very, very individual. And this is where, this is where you need a supportive dietitian to give you how many calories your child needs. How old is your child, Kelly? Twelve. Twelve, yeah. So Lewis is 14. So for Lewis, he's quite tall and skinny. Um, I know how many calories per day he needs. Mm -hmm. I can roughly work out, and quite often I'll use like a pouch of wholesome blends, and I know it's got the this one particularly 300 calories. I might add more food to that. I might add some avocado, some MCT oil. I might add some more sweet potato or something else just to kind of bulk that up and reblend all of it, and that's his food for the day. So again, we go back to that whole: how many do we need? How many calories do we need? What is the stomach volume of your child, and how much can they hold in their tummy? Can they hold? 12 year olds should be able to hold a fairly decent amount at probably one of these. I mean, I know Lewis was eating one of these at that age, but again, every child is different. If they're in a wheelchair, it's different, all of those situations. And then again, how long does it take for that to digest through their system before you can refill that again? So those are the three questions that you probably really need to check. There's no, when, when I created Wholesome Blends, they said to me, when the design was happening, they said to me, well, how many serves do you want this to be? And I said, well, what's the legislation around that? How many serves? Are we allowed? And they said, well, you can choose. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want to choose. Like, what's, what's the law? But there's no legislation around what a serve is. So I've put on wholesome blends that this is one serve because if you have a child that is 18 months old, you're going to work it out that that child can probably have three or four portions of this. And so it might be four portions in one pouch. For my son, he might have one of these as one serve. We have a lot of adult tubies as well that might be half a serve for them. So again, it just so depends on the age, the volume they can take, how long that digests and what calorie intake they need per day. So I didn't really answer your question. I'm sorry, Kelly, but I think that um, that's so individual and you just kind of need oh. to play around with that a bit. I think if if one thing that could come of this, for, like for me personally, is if there is kind of resource of dietitians that support tube feeding, that would be an awesome resource to to have um just from not so great experience so far um yeah yeah and i think that if you don't have someone a dietitian that's supporting you in your choice and what you need for your family then we can help you find someone who is going to do that yeah. and and we we all do mm -hmm. support people in our community and help them find those people because they certainly are out there and the times are changing and those allied health professionals need to keep up and change with us as well. I have, I have very strong feelings about that. Yeah, I was quite shocked. But, um, yeah, it would be good to get any um, yeah. recommendations that you that you have. Absolutely. Flick me an email, Kelly, and I'm happy to happy to help. Thank you. I Thanks, can get back to you, Kelly. <clears throat> Just for those of you who may look, Kelly is a uh, wonderful paediatric physiotherapist, by the way. She works out a uh, she doesn't work for Napa, but she works out of Napa's Sydney office, and she's also a continence uh, physiotherapist as well. So when it comes to bed wedding time or, or, or toilet training and stuff like that, Ke Kelly's your go-to person for that. So you can also contact her through the Napa website. Thanks, Kel. That's cool. <laughs> um, uh, there you go. I just gave you a plug. Look at that. You don't have to even pay me for that. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, Kelly also said earlier, to, I think, to an earlier conversation we were saying, is that she got new nutrition. Is that am I saying that right? From Westmead Nutrisha? Hospital. Um, yep. Vicky said, nutrition uh, nurses are the best or are, are great. Free hire of the pumps. <clears throat> 
Uh, Bronwyn says Sydney kids Randwick do Nutritia, but Westmead do Flow Care. It's worth knowing you have a choice, though. Um, sorry, she said it might be the other way around, um, but it's worth knowing that, she, that her point is that you have a choice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and Kelly already asked that question, so I can move on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, this sounds like it might be a question for Sarah, or maybe if we've still got any dietitians still online. How do you go about introducing allergen foods, e.g. fish? I want to introduce fish to my 18-month-old, but I'm concerned about an allergic reaction. <clears throat> so I'm just going to say I'm not a dietitian. I am a tubey <laughs> mum and I'm a creator of food so I can answer any questions about that. Um, I would love Lena or one of the other dietitians to jump on here, but my mum advice is to start incredibly slow with tiny little portions and watch them just to make sure that they're going to be okay. But if, if there are any dietitians on here that want to jump <clears> in and answer this question, because I'm certainly not educated to give a you know, give a, a definitive answer there. I just know from my own personal experience is testing my own children on what they would, that what, you know, testing for allergies and things like that. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, so I'm not sure if Lena or uh, Vicky are still online, but if you do have an answer to that one, please uh, pop your hand up or unmute yourself and, and let us know. Um, uh, and Vicky has said also, we work on an estimated stomach size on the size of your baby's fist. So that's uh, Vicky was Good. a dietitian, so that's one of the uh, tips that she had for that earlier conversation yep. we were having as well. <clears throat> Okie dokie, that I've reached. We've reached the end of our questions. Unless we've got any last minute questions, quickly, 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 shove them in there. We have gone slightly over time, um, but if you've got any last questions, pop them in there. But I just wanted to take, in the meantime, take this opportunity to really, really thank from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Mel, Stacey and Sarah for joining us. Um, of course, uh, you know, Sarah has her wonderful Wholesome um, wholesome Blends website. Uh, Stacey um, has the Tubi Fun website. And of course, Mel has the uh, the podcast that she, do, she does through um, Higher Up as well as the Blend magazine, as well as the special uh, book. So if you haven't read that book, do yourself a favour and read that book. Obviously, these guys have their own businesses, they have their own passions, but but what I think the point of this conversation tonight was to relay and just open conversation and really talk about this stuff. There's not a, a million forums for us to talk about this sort of stuff. Uh, this community is quite small, but I think the important thing to know is that th there is a community out there, there is support. And I just love the fact that they've all been so open tonight and that they will work one-on-one -on -one with you guys. If you are having yeah. trouble getting these things mm -hmm. through your NDIS plan, send an email to Sarah, send an email to Stacey. These guys will yeah. help you. They have helped others. They're not going to obviously guarantee it, but they can certainly go down the path of helping you as much as they can to get the, the best results for your child. Advocate, advocate, advocate. Right. Thanks, so thank Paul. thank you very much. Thank you very much thank for your you time, for having everyone. You. Yeah, thank you're so much. Us. Thanks Hostess for spending the evening with us. Yeah, thank you, Paul. You're a huge support to we our family. We will definitely support. host the next one from up Brisbane way once yes. Napa has been yeah. in Brisbane oh. in August. Now, there's my plug. I think we've got Vicky has, Vicky has just popped on and said, um, in regards to the allergy question, um, always introduce with caution, especially if there's a family history of allergies. Otherwise, follow normal guidelines. Have an antihistamine on hand for when you're doing it. Um, <clears throat> and she also said uh, just a big thank you to the three of you on screen right now. Uh, thank you. We learn more from we we learn more from you than you probably do from us. So oh, thank you very know. much. I don't know. <laughs> Lots of thanks coming through from everyone. So thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Everyone enjoy uh, Tube Feeding Awareness Week. Lots of stuff happening across the week. Go out and, and what's the website that they can look up the the purple buildings? Um, That's it, Aussie no. Inc. 
Yeah, which Aussie I think Inks. is AussieInc.com. So have a look at that. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. happening all across. Uh, there are many, many ways that you can get your hands on the Blend magazine. Of course, if you make an order through Stacey or Sarah this week, you'll get a Blend magazine included. Uh, as um, Mel said earlier, you can uh, read the Blend online. What's the website for that, Mel? It's theblendmag.com. Theblendmag.com. We yeah. do have a we do have some copies um, at Napa as well. So if you are coming to Napa this week in Sydney, uh, we do have copies for you there as well. So please do yourself a favor and read that. And obviously try and track down a copy of last year's blend as well, because it was also an amazing read. Yeah. Uh, lots of thanks coming through and thank you very much uh, for everyone who has logged in tonight. We look forward to hopefully hosting another similar event this time next year. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All the best. Bye. See you. Bye.